This is the third video in a series about ancient Greek that I'm doing. Um, this video is about the materials uh, that I think are good. I could talk about the materials I think are bad, but there's no point to that. I'll focus on what I think is good. Um, this is Learn Ancient Greek. It is a book by Peter Jones. It is a collection of newspaper columns aimed at teaching you just a little bit of ancient Greek, give you a flavor for what it's like. Um, if you go through this book, you will not have learned ancient Greek. You'll just learn a taste of it. Um, Jones is very good. He's funny in a very dry English way, and I appreciated his humor. He <clears throat> has carefully selected some texts so that you can read through some real, unadapted ancient Greek and feel like you've learned something. I'll flip through this book a little bit. Um, he introduces the Greek alphabet, and I apologize for the lighting, but it kind of is what it is here. Um, there are some cartoon illustrations. Um, he teaches you basic grammar. Um, he has exercises in Greek. This is a whole paragraph in Greek. It gives you cultural notes, gives you more readings from ancient Greek. As you can see, there's two whole paragraphs of ancient Greek. But what's really nice about this is that he gives you the answers too, so then that way you can see just how much you really did get out of this. Um, he really does, to my mind, a nice job of presenting ancient Greek so that it's accessible for anyone that doesn't want to sink a whole lot of time into it, but still wants to get an idea what it's like. He's really good. I would recommend virtually anything that has his name on it. Easily available from Amazon.com or directly from Duckworth, the publisher. And that's Learn Ancient Greek. <clears throat> now, if you want to get into learning Greek for real, you're going to need to step up to something like Athanase. Um, Athanase has been around for a while. It's by Balm and Lawal. I also like Gil Lawal's work. I have other books by him in Latin. This one's in Greek. And he does a good job. He has a, to my mind, he has a really solid understanding of how to make material accessible. And the basic setup in Athanase is that they're going to give you some vocabulary to learn for each chapter. They're going to give you a reading. And in some places, they're going to give you some extra words, some extra help so that you can read. Um, then after you read, you're going to go through and do the grammar explanation. Then after that are various kinds of exercises and more reading and more exercises. Here are comprehension questions. Here are translating English into Greek, all very standard stuff. But instead of focusing on a lot of grammar exposition, they give you a lot of Greek to read. It's set in ancient Greece, so you can get a little bit of familiarity with the culture, but in case you need more. They also have essays written in English about the culture, but as you can see, the focus of it is on the reading of the Greek itself. As you progress through the book, the readings get more complicated with more vocabulary entries as you gain familiarity with the vocabulary and the grammar becomes more complex as you become familiar with the grammar. The biggest drawback to this book is that the exercises are not answered in the book, so you will need an answer key. Um, but it does have a nice English, Greek, and then this is the Greek-English vocabulary in the back of the book. So that's a, that's a nice point of this book. But as I said, if you want the answers to the exercises, you're going to need, you're going to need to get the teacher's manual. Another nice thing about this book is that it's been around for a while, so there are plenty of used copies kicking about. Also available on Amazon.com.
these next three books that I'm going to put out are all one series. Let's see if I can get them all to show. This is the Joint Association of Classical Teachers Greek Course, also known as JACT. Um, it's called Reading Greek. Um, this is the old edition. It is not the new edition. My understanding is that the new edition does something that I really like, and I'm going to point out what I really don't like about this, and hopefully the new edition, my understanding is that this is all fixed. You will need all three of these books for this course, unfortunately. Or fortunately, as you see it. The, the primary focus is the text, and what they've done is in each section they have an English introduction to an adapted Greek text. And as you can see, all of the text, or maybe not see, depending how good your computer monitor is and my camera is, and all this text is in Greek. Even the captions on the pictures are completely in Greek. There's very little English. There's a little bit of English introducing each section, and they've chopped it up into manageable sections for you. And all of this is adapted from various bits of Greek literature, and they tell you where they've adapted it from. Like, this one is, I think, from a, an account of Plato, and then they tell you exactly where. But that's over here in the independent guide. And then over here, you have the grammar, vocabulary, and exercises. And what they've done is put the this is section 7, vocabulary for section 7a, and here's all of the vocabulary. And here's the vocabulary for section b, and the vocabulary for section c. So you need to have two books open. My understanding is that this very ugly feature is fixed in the new edition, in that the vocabulary is on the page. Then after a few sections, so this one is 7a, b, and c, then you move into the grammar explanation, and this one happens to be the genitive case, and they go on to explain much about it. Uh, more explanation. And then you come to the exercises. Um, translate from Greek into English. Convert verbs into a polite form with the optative. Translate more Greek sentences into English, and then finally English into Greek. And then a test to see how you've done. Unfortunately, there are no answers in the grammar, vocabulary, and exercises, which is where you need the independent guide to, to reading Greek. And this really is very, very good. You absolutely have to have this book, and make sure you've got the correct edition of this for the edition of the other books that you are using. What it has is a little bit more English introduction. It has some notes that explain various tricky features in the section, and then a translation of section 3a. Um, this is nice because when you're reading, if it makes sense, you're probably understanding it the right way. But if you're not, if it doesn't make sense, you're probably doing it the wrong way. However, you can make sense of it and not have a good understanding. So the translation allows you to see just where your understanding is not so great and where your understanding is better. And then they do it again for 3b and 3c, 3d and 3f. And then finally they give you the answers for all of the exercises in the exercise book. And this is really key. So this allows you to study ancient Greek completely on your own without a teacher. Don't tell anyone that you're doing it without a teacher. So this is jacked reading Greek. It is very much focused on reading Greek. It'll teach you to read Greek by having you read Greek. The third textbook that I used is um, Ancient Greek Live by Sapphire and Fries. And it's just another approach. And each Athanase and Reading Greek and Ancient Greek Alive have a slightly different take on what they think is most important and a slightly different take on what vocabulary points are important, but they're all the same in one really important way, and that is that they have readings in ancient Greek for you to read, because nothing teaches you how to read ancient Greek 
better than reading ancient Greek. And what they've done is they've modified the Greek so that you have vocabulary and grammatical. It's all graded to what you actually know as opposed to the unadapted Greek where it just it is what it is. So this book has a really nice feature. It has connected readings in ancient Greek. It explains the tricky parts, gives you definitions for all the words that you don't know. And then it gives you grammar. Well, the grammar explanations come before the reading, but you can reverse it and do it the other way around, where you read first and then get the grammar explanation. Um, and it's really nice because they give plenty of Greek examples and they use boxes to show off the important parts. But what I don't like is that it's a bunch of um, folk tales from cultures that aren't ancient Greece. They aren't even Greece. It, They've got the Nasrudin tales from Turkey or Iran, depending where you want to say he's from. And from China and from Sub-Saharan Africa. And these are all really wonderful stories and they're fun to read. But if I wanted to read those, I'd take a class or buy a book about folk tales and not an ancient Greek textbook. But otherwise, it's just very solidly done and I really like it. She points out what's what's important by putting it in boxes, gives you nice readings that get longer and more complicated, and they really do mirror ancient Greek. I can't say enough good about this book, except for the fact that, you know, here's an Armenian folk tale about the mosquitoes buzz. And it's a fun read, but it's not why I want to learn ancient Greek. Um, ancient Greek Alive by Sapphire and Fries. Solid book. But as I said, folk tales that aren't ancient Greek. Um, and the final entry is going to be very difficult to get a hold of if you are an American. Uh, much easier if you're from Europe. Um, I got this from Amazon.fr. And this is really wonderful. Um, this is by Christoph Rico. And he, this is Koine Greek. The other books I showed you were aimed at Attic Greek. This is Koine Greek, the Greek of the New Testament. And Rico is going to teach Greek as if it were a modern European language. So he has dialogues in ancient Greek. He teaches you all the grammar terms in, in ancient Greek. The pages have numbers and then the number is in ancient Greek. The exercises are closes, um, big long dialogues, all of this pointing towards the best way to learn ancient Greek is to speak it and read it and learn it as a whole. And that's the best way to learn it and really get a solid handle on Koine Greek so then that way you can fully get a better understanding of the New Testament, which is ultimately where Rico is pointing his students, though of course there's all sorts of stuff written in Koine Greek and, and Rico is also going to say that it's good stuff too, I'm sure, so I don't want to paint him as saying the only reason you learn ancient Greek is so that you can read the New Testament. Um, he also has a set of good recordings that go with this so you're not stuck out on your own thinking, well, how is this pronounced? Well, no problem. Rico gives you a CD with the pronunciation. Um, in the back, he gives an explanation of all the grammar terms charts. Most books have these features. Um, he has translations of all of the readings and dialogues from earlier in the book, and he has the answers to all the exercises, so it's really quite self-contained. However, it's in French, not English. So this is a problem if you do not speak French, or at least have a decent reading skill with French. Um, very solid book. It's kind of a pain to get if you live in the United States, but European people should have a much easier time of getting it. Um, it seems to me like this book is more suitable for a classroom than for self-learning, but you can beat it into the self-learning hole anyway.